hey guys welcome back to my channel how are you doing i hope you are great because i'm doing good as you guys can see so in today's video we're going to be discussing the pros and cons of either renting a house or buying a house or building your own house we are also going to be discussing making major changes in a rented apartment like renovations how much should you change to what extent does it make financial sense for you to do that so yeah we're going to be talking money we're going to be talking finances we're going to be talking about the financial implications of owning property you know yeah whether it's a good investment or not so if at some point in this video you realize hmm i actually like this video please don't hesitate to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already okay thank you so i am going to start this discussion by saying something that i always say you cannot place a price tag on value so if you choose to build a house if you choose to rent a house if you choose to buy a house simply because it's what you want is what it will make you happy is what will make you sleep better at night is what will you know elevate your life and you know make you a happier person then please go ahead and do it i really don't like when people try to justify their spendings by trying to say oh it's an investment it makes financial sense mm -mm. just own it with your chest that you want to enjoy your life it's luxury you can afford at this time and you are going ahead to, to buy it okay like when, like like when some people you know buy expensive bags expensive shoes you know expensive hair and they're justifying it by saying well it's an investment is i'm like please it's not an investment my dear you could have carried your normal hair you could have worn your normal bathroom slippers <laughs> nobody will beat you some people buy outrageous things that you can't even justify in your head okay so people spend millions of dollars on paintings so because you are buying a few designer bags here you are now trying to you are feeling like you have to explain to everybody no please you owe nobody an explanation okay same with building a house you can build a house because you want to build a house it doesn't have to make financial sense okay yeah so that being said let's dive right into the advantages of building your own home so one of the first major advantages that anybody can think of is the joy of owning your own home like I can't even explain that joy when you know that this house is mine nobody can come and tell me nothing i can make any changes i want to make at any time like it's my home nobody's coming to ask me for rent i'm not going to live here anytime soon like you can make long-term plans in that home because you know that it is your home and you can do with it as you please the number two advantage is that especially if you have the money you are going to be building your house to your taste you are not settling for someone else's taste you're not settling for you know an apartment that you're not really comfortable in but you can afford you are building a home to your taste you can make the rooms as large as you want or as small as you want you can add as many rooms as you want you know you can play around with the house as much as you like so yeah that's a very huge advantage if you ask me thirdly everything in the house is brand new like ah you guys i love a brand new house everything is clean everything is brand new you know everything is is working perfectly also when you're building your house you have better quality especially if you have the money especially if you're building your forever house or you know one of your forever forever houses you will make sure everything is of quality you wouldn't want to purposely buy substandard materials sometimes they can cheat you but you most likely go for the best everything is more modern more modern designs more modern architecture so now let's move on to the disadvantages of building a home but in the comment section if you have more advantages and disadvantages more points to add to the points that i'm going to be giving you guys today please leave a comment in the comment section and put your points down there i would love to read them okay thank you so number one disadvantage of building your own home is the fact that it is capital intensive building a home is not a joke especially in 2021 especially if you want to build a quality house in a quality you know environment in a good environment in a nice estate in a new estate it's not cheap man the land is not cheap the building materials are not cheap <laughs> dollar is rising everything is rising so it is not cheap to build you know your own home it is actually quite capital intensive and also you are going to get a lot of hidden costs that you do not anticipate okay hidden expenses hidden you know challenges that you do not anticipate you are most likely going to encounter them when you are building your own house you can mitigate this by getting you know professional builders professional architects and all of that but trust me something is going to come up that none of you you know saw coming even when there are changes or mistakes or errors or something that you need to change those things actually cost you know more money to change so it's not easy it costs a lot of change my dear number two disadvantage and this is one of the biggest ones for me is that when you build a home you are stuck there for a while so if you're building this home at a time when you're not sure where your life is you know going if you're not sure if things are not really settled with you you are going to be stuck there you know because the, the house is your own and even if okay you have to move you are transferred like you don't have a choice but you have to let this house go you have to put the house up for sale and most times when you put houses up for sale and you're in a hurry to 
you know, cash out, people will price you anyhow. They will price your house like they are pricing crayfish. <laughs> You know, it's easier to sell off a land that has been lying fallow that is just an empty land. It's easier to sell an empty plot of land than to sell a land that has property on it, especially when you are also trying to sell the property. Because for instance, if you spend, let's say, 50 million or 60 million building a house, and you wanted to sell the house for, let's say, 70 million, or because you are pressed for money or you know you don't want it to drag too much, let's say you want to even sell the house for 65 million. If I had 65 million to buy a house, I will most likely not go and buy your house like I really might not want to buy your house I'd rather go and look for my own land and build my own house because I have a lot of money to play around with okay so yeah it's not easy to dispose of a building it's, it's quite difficult okay sometimes you can be lucky you can be lucky and sell your house in under a week and you can be unlucky and to be dragging for 10 years okay and you have to beat down the price so much and maybe sell at a loss nah for me one of the biggest cons is the fact that if you're not settled if you're not saying okay if you cannot project that for the next 10 years 20 years I'm going to be in this city or in being this environment then i advise you not to build a house okay the fourth one is maintenance my dear sisters and brothers <laughs> Maintenance is a huge thing that comes with owning a house. Like you might not really anticipate it. You might think that, well, what will I really be changing? I'm using everything new. Everything is brand new. Everything is new. What will be spoiling? Nothing is going to spoil. Trust me, okay? You have to maintain your building. You're going to maintain the environment, the landscaping, the painting, the plumbing, the electricals. You are going to have to do some maintenance. Maybe not in the first two or three or four or five years, but at some point, it's as if they'll just put on a switch and things will start spoiling at left, right, and center like from every, like today plumbing tomorrow electricals then next tomorrow uh, tiling you know <laughs> something will always spoil furniture stuff like that you know so maintenance is actually a huge expense when it comes to owning a home and then the last point which is actually a very funny point is the fact that taste changes okay taste changes it's a human phenomenon it's a natural phenomenon it is just the way human beings are wired you might build your house this year and feel like this is the best test thing since whatever like the architecture the everything is going to be on point in your eyes are like wow wow i have outdone myself hmm come back to that house in the next 10 years come back to that house in the next 20 years with the way technology is advancing with the way architecture is advancing with the way things are advancing at a very rapid rate 10 years later your house is gonna be old model they're gonna look at your house and you're gonna be like hmm Maybe I should make a few changes, you know, I, 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 let me make my house a little bit more modern and then that's another, you know, capital intensive project as well. Now let's move over to the advantages of buying a home. I think buying a home and building a home, you know, they have similar advantages and disadvantages because basically this property now belongs to you. But the extra advantages that buying a home has is that number one, you move in faster. Yeah, you don't spend that time and energy trying to build your house and uh, the house is ready made. Some new houses actually come with furnitures and fittings and stuff like that. So you're just bringing your bags and you're just moving in. Okay? Okay, so buying a home is actually very convenient because once you pay for the house, you can buy a house today and by weekend you've moved in. Like, it's that fast. But when it comes to building a house, you're gonna wait. You are going to have to wait, okay? And then the next advantage I can think of is the fact that you can actually spend less buying a house okay so hear me out number one you can buy an old home you can buy an older home not so old but it's older than what is being built currently okay which is still you know okay like it's not like the houses are old houses it's just that maybe they were built two or three or four years ago which is fine by me okay so yeah it can actually be cheaper for you to buy a home than for you to build it from scratch okay and remember there might be houses that are built in 2021 beautiful fine houses and for some reason the owner wants to sell it off the owner you know needs the money the owner wants to travel and then they're selling the house off and you are pricing them like like you're pricing crayfish okay you are one of those people that are pricing the house like you're pricing crayfish and the person will just have to settle and sell the house to you for much cheaper than they would have on a normal day okay so that is one of the advantages of buying a home you are in a better position to bid better and buy you know at a cheaper rate than if you how to build a house from scratch now other disadvantages to buying a home over building your own home okay when you buy a home mm, trust me sometimes most times it is not 100% to your taste okay it can't be in fact if it is then you are very lucky you found a good house okay or you're very lucky but most times you are going to compromise on one or two things okay is it that Maybe there's a room in the house that you don't like the space or you don't like the way the house, the room was built or maybe it's the land, maybe it's the... Something in the house might not be to your taste and sometimes it is not really easy to make 
changes that will be to your taste. For instance, they've already done the foundation, they've already done the foundation. You cannot turn here into a hole. If you have to break down the walls and do some changes, it might affect the structure, okay? The structural integrity and all of that. It might affect it, so you just have to leave it. So yeah, and live with it for the rest of your life <laughs> or for as long as you own that property. Then the biggest one for me is hidden issues you do not know about. Yes, there's some issues that a house might have that nobody is willing to disclose to you because they want to sell it off quickly. Okay, so you might go and buy a house thinking, ah, I don't have much. This house is so beautiful. This house is so great. And then one year down the line, you discover that there's a beehive somewhere. Uh, there's uh, one leaky pipe or maybe this was a burial ground before. <laughs> This was a very ground before or something bad or maybe something with the structure or something with the plumbing the electricals you cannot tell yeah i know abroad you can get um i think they call them inspectors or so they come and inspect the building and tell you if or what is wrong with the home or the building you know but in nigeria do we really have inspectors i don't know if we have and if they do a good job sometimes it might not have to do with the building it might have to do with ownership okay you can go and buy a house today and then tomorrow you find that it is the son of the owner of the house that sold the house meanwhile the owner doesn't know anything about that house being sold and you now start doing court case and up and down so before you go and buy a house you have to be really really careful about the ownership the situation around how the house is being sold and also you know get someone that can inspect the house and tell you how good you know the house is whether it is what you're paying your money for so now let's move over to the advantages of renting a house which is the situation of majority of people in the country most people are actually renting this house is actually rented so yeah i'm sure all of you can relate with some of these points all right in fact this is part of the reason why i wanted to make this video because yeah i live in a four bedroom duplex we have a large compound we have two boys quarters at the back we have parking space we have a gatesman's house we have a generator house we have two parlors we have a large kitchen we have a laundry room we have a store room and all the rooms are en suite so yeah this is actually a perfect house for a family with children i remember getting a lot of questions in the beginning when i first moved in here i mean by people online and even people visiting and then they come in they're like oh because the house is obviously not brand new when they come here they're like oh you guys bought the house and i'm like no for rent and they're like why would you rent this kind of house why won't you go and build your own so let me move over to the advantages of renting a home and why we decided to rent this home okay number one major advantage to me is that i am enjoying all these amenities all this space all this you know advantages i am enjoying them at a fraction of the cost if i were to build this house <laughs> it's gonna cost a lot it's not it's not cheap at all because first of all consider the environment where you're living in consider the kind of house you are living in consider the space your neighbors everybody around it's not cheap to build this kind of house so one thing people used to tell me then a lot is that instead of you guys to pay this amount of rent why don't you guys just go and build your own house and i'm like hey first of all do i have the money do i have the money to even afford this land like even if this land was empty do i have the money to come and buy this land <laughs> you know people don't know another thing is that if i decide to save all this rent that i'm paying in this house if i decide to save it so that i'll be able to buy this house or build a similar house i would have to save for at least 20 years let that sink in like if i calculate my rent this year and i keep keeping my rent for me to be able to build this house like only my rent i mean only the rent and you know expenses around the house like you know even how i renovated my kitchen and all of that if i were to put all that money together and i'm like every year instead of paying my landlord this rent let me just be saving the money so that i'll build this house 20 years i never save and finish 30 years safe i might okay be coming close and in 30 years time this house is going to be worth more than it is right now okay i mean the property plus inflation and all of that so at the end of the day what is really the big deal about paying that amount of money as rent considering that i cannot even afford to build the house or buy the land myself what's the problem but i'm enjoying it so imagine if i had a neighbor that has exactly the same house but the neighbor either built or bought that house what's the difference between me and that my neighbor now what is the difference will anybody come here and knock and say eh we want to see the landlord no it's me they're coming to see it is my house when i tell people come and visit me in my house i won't come i won't tell them come and visit me in my landlord's house so on the surface you cannot tell the difference between me as a renter and you know my neighbor as a homeowner there's no difference so another advantage is less maintenance okay yeah i don't really do much in maintaining this house because there's some things that i would definitely leave for my landlord to do it's not me i'm going to come and do them okay the only things i do in this house are things that affect me on a daily basis the reason why i try to renovate my kitchen is because i wanted to i wanted a better kitchen someone told me that eh why are you spending such money renovating your kitchen are you going to carry your kitchen with you if your, if your landlord chases you away and i'm like i'm doing it for my landlord eh please i am I'm, I'm trying to appreciate my landlord my landlord deserves an upgraded kitchen in 
fact, if I had the money, I would upgrade the kitchen even more since it's my landlord that's cooking for me. Since it's my landlord that comes here to cook every morning and clean and, you know, serve me food, let me help my landlord by giving my landlord a state-of-the-art standard kitchen. So when I have the money, I'm going to do that for my landlord. <laughs> Okay, because people just say this thing and I feel like they don't really think it through. Like, why are you saying that a space that I live in right now at this moment, I should not make it conducive for me to live in? The people who spend that money in a club, the people who spend that money even much more self-organizing, you know, events, birthday party, traveling, um, um, vacation. The people who spend that money doing things that you can't even see one proof of. Me, at least my own, the kitchen, they there, they cook in the kitchen. One proof, you cannot see, only pictures. <laughs> And they did not die. So, my dear sister, allow me, eh? allow me, allow me to enjoy myself. Allow me to enjoy myself. <laughs> Number three reason, which is one of the biggest reasons for me, is that I can leave this house at any time with no strings attached, okay? Yes, like I said about not being settled, for me right now, if I say, okay, project my next 10 years, I can't really say for sure, for sure, that I am going to be living in this house. I'm going to be, my kids are going to be, my kids are going to be going to the school that they're going to. My husband is going to be in this city. Like, I can't really project. In fact, in the next 10 years, if I had a choice, I won't be here. That's just the truth. I will not be here. I'll probably be in a, you know, you guys know where. <laughs> you know, so I might probably not even be here. So I can't really use that to judge, okay? So tomorrow, if my husband is transferred, if I change my mind, if we're running away if black suit is too much if nigeria is burning i'm just gonna pack my bags carry my children put my husband on my head and we all flee no strings attached no oh i want to try and sell off my house oh i have property there i hope they don't vandalize it oh no i just pack my things carry my children and run to the border <laughs> I'm saying this thing is not funny, God forbid, I'm not running in Jesus' name, nothing's going to happen to this country, please, I beg, I beg, God, I beg. <laughs> the last house that we lived in was a rented apartment, all was well, all was good, it wasn't fantastic, I, I wanted so many things to be changed, I wanted to move out, but not urgently, like I was okay staying there for a few more years. Then all of a sudden, beside us, a fraternity, I'd be called Tist or whatever, moved in, and every Friday night, okay, I think it was Friday and Wednesday, or throughout the weekend, I can't even remember at this point, but I remember that Friday night from 6 p.m p.m. to the next morning these people will be making noise they'll be playing music by playing music i mean drums beating drums that boom, 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 all those drums they'll be beating drums they'll be singing at the top of their voices they'll be smoking they'll be drinking they'll be shouting every single friday like you guys i was miserable I was miserable, like, especially when I, was, and I had small babies, I had Cora in that house, I also had Eva in that house. With my babies, I'm trying to put my babies to sleep, and the next thing, somebody is just shouting, my child will wake up, I'll have to hold my child. At some point, I'll carry my babies to the father's room in the house, as in the room that is father's from, you know, their space. I'll carry my children there and try to put them to sleep, but even at that, the noise will still reach us. I used to close doors, close windows, you know, on fan. If there's no AC, I'll on the fan. Like, it was, it was terrible, okay? And I told myself, I told my husband, I can't take this shit anymore, okay? I can't take this. We have to move. Because we really liked our landlord. He was a very nice person. He used to come to the house and make all the changes we needed to make in the house. Anything spoils in the house. We're just going to call the landlord. He'll come and make the change. Once those cultists or fraternity people moved in, we're just like, peace, y'all. We... We got that girl. It was nice knowing you, okay? The fifth one is that you can actually get more modern houses when you want to. So, for instance, if I stay in this house and I'm like, you know what? I'm fed up. My taste has changed. I need I need something more modern, more peng. There's always a more modern, more peng house for rent, okay? People are... rent House for rent when they go out of season. People are always building and putting houses on rent. I also don't have to bother myself with the decreasing value of property. It's not my business whether this house was built with 10 million and it sold for 5 million. It's not my business. Another advantage is that you can actually downsize if things get tough money gets tough you know or you just don't need that space anymore maybe you had a five bedroom mansion or something and then your kids are off to university your kids are married what do you need all that space for you can actually downsize to a three bedroom or even a two bedroom flat and just enjoy your life okay so let's move over to the disadvantages the number one disadvantage is my brother my sister no be your house whether or not you like this house so much you have done so many changes you have done this you have built that you have the, it is not your house okay come and be going leave my house whenever the landlord is ready or the landlady is ready to take her house back she's gonna give you quick notice maximum six months you are out of her house okay and moving is freaking expensive and stressful you guys one of the reasons why eh, I, I might stay stuck in a house for a while is that that moving is expensive like actually when you have small children and all of that and they're used to a certain you know routine and lifestyle and you know environment moving can be quite difficult so keep it in mind that eh, all this i just said now the advantage is it is still 
still not your house. Anyhow, you want to look at it. It does not belong to you. Anything can happen tomorrow. You can be chased out tomorrow when you're not ready and that can take a toll on you. You can even make renovations, make changes and make the house conducive for you and then tomorrow you are transferred to another city. Like your office temporarily transfers you to another city, you know, and brings you back. You cannot say, ah, I'm coming back also. Keep that house for me. I'm coming back. You're going to have to move out like every other person and then when you're coming back, you're going to have to re-rent a new house. But if it was your house, if it was a house you built or you bought for yourself and just lock up your house when you're ready you come back and open up your house again and clean it up and continue living number three is that you cannot really customize a rented apartment completely to your taste okay it's hard to get one that is completely your taste and even when you get one that is kind of your taste you cannot customize it like you can't come and be breaking down walls in my house like who are you who, who, who the hell do you think you are you just go to your landlord's house and say i don't like the size of this room you start breaking down the walls eh what, what did you smoke <laughs> You know, so most times you cannot make major changes in a house that is not yours. You have to take express permission from the landlord and land or landlady. And most times they might not even agree. So you just have to live with what you see there. Then the last one I can think of, which actually bothers a lot of people, is the fact that you have years of payment with nothing to show for it, okay? So for instance, your rent is, let's say, 5 million naira. So after 20 years of paying rent, let's, say, let's just say you pay it for over five, over 20 years, okay? Because it's going to increase. But let's just say over 20 years of paying 5 million naira, you know, and your landlord now says, okay, don't do, come and be going. You have nothing to show for it. You don't have a property to show for it. You don't have a house to show for it for those years of payment. But for me, this disadvantage doesn't really affect me much because when I think of it, I think of it this way. Like I said, what you're paying as rent, okay? some people splurge that money on nonsense if I you the money you paid as rent you spent that same money on nonsense with nothing to show for it so let's not make it look like paying rent is one side experience you paid to live so it is an expense that makes sense for instance it's like saying ah I've been buying rice for the past 20 years and I have no no farm to show for it or I have no rice factory to show for it like how does that how does that even relate let's say you're given a property and you have the options of either buying that property or renting the same property okay now let's consider it in figures let's say the property was built for let's say 100 million naira right okay i don't think that rent in that same house would be up to 10 million naira i don't think so have you guys seen houses that we are built for 100 million naira and the rent is 10 million naira per year i really doubt though except it was built 100 million naira you know years back and yeah but if it was a brand new house maximum rent you pay in that house is 5 million, 6 million, 7 million. So if you had that 100 million naira now and you want to invest the money, let's say you go and put it in the lowest low risk income that you can think of. Let's say, but let's just say piggy vest. You just carry your money and put it in piggy vest, okay? At least yearly, you're going to be seeing 8%, 8% of that money, at least. Sometimes you can get 10%. If you lock it, you can get 13%, 20%. You know, if you invest, you can get 20% and stuff like that. But let's just keep it, let's just cap it at 10%. Okay. 10% of 100 million naira per year is 10 million naira. Trust me, you're not going to spend all that money on rent. You'll most likely spend five to six million naira on rent you won't have enough money to renovate and do more stuff okay aside the value part like i said you cannot place a price tag on value so i'm talking about if you are doing it purely for financial and investment reasons i'll tell you it's better for you to go and rent that same house if you're given the option to either buy it or rent it okay now to the next question should you make major changes in a house that is rented for me i would say emphatically yes please do especially when you're moving in for the first time most times in nigeria the first rent you pay you pay for two years so if you ask me if you have the money as you're moving in make all the changes you want to make so that you have at least two years to enjoy those changes some places is one year but at least you have at least one year you know that worst case scenario you have one year or two years to enjoy these things so for me I don't I don't have any problem with making major changes in a home that I'm renting because it's my home it's where I live again why are you thinking of what your landlord is going to do with the house when you leave like ah like you're dashing your landlord yeah let me dash my landlord and my landlord don't be person don't be person picking hmm? don't be person papa don't be person mama <laughs> that's my landlord now anyway on a more serious note let me know in the comment section which one you favor more so yeah thank you guys so much for watching let me know your thoughts in the comment section don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up because i tried to i've talked enough today okay so please give it a big thumbs up for me and for my fresh face <laughs> subscribe to my channel and i'll see you all in my next video bye guys mm -hmm.